welcome to Sheep Farm, home of free speech while it lasts, no matter what we're bleating about. And here's another episode of Mint Sauce Chronicles uh, on a Saturday night. It's 7.50, 50, 7.50, 10 to 8. Um, and uh, we're recording another. Uh, we've done quite a few recently. And I'd like to thank you all for listening and sharing. And a shout goes out to all the members who make it possible for uh, Chris to spend more time working on uh, sheep farm and less time in the kitchen. Um, although he's, he's answering emails quite a lot more now. I'm going to say, uh, basically answering emails. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, at the minute. But bit, yeah. Bit uh, yeah. Um, behind, behind the scenes, we're looking at doing uh, a lot more. We're getting pestered for merchandise. So we, we, we're looking at um, setting up uh, an e commerce shop. When I do stuff, I like to do it where we're, we're sort of self sustainable, if you like. Uh, and we're upgrading our sound quality for better better sounding productions uh chris has got another mic um i'm gonna get his computer upgraded with better sound cards and stuff like that uh the quality is incre- improving i know it is i can i can tell you can't help the um you can improve your microphone and your computers at home but you can't ever be in control of the connectivity with who you're using like zoom or any other sort of platform and also if you're interviewing people you're only ever as good as their mic and their equipment at home and their connectivity. So um, we can't help that part. But uh, anyway, I know I, I can tell over the last few weeks we've, it's improved. If you want to contact us, remember, contact us on email at info at sheepfarm.co.uk. Don't put a, a comment on YouTube or even, even on the website or on Podomatic or Instagram because it might not get uh, read. Uh, I can assure you that every... Every email, and I can't, you can never say everyone, but every email, more or less every email, will get answered because we see them there in front of us and we're monitoring if you've got the emails. A logging in or whatever. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> basically, I'm going through the emails and looking at the login ones that are having a problem. They're the ones emergently answering. Yeah. The other ones, um, some of them are file away, some of them are, but I'm trying to read through them all and answer. I won't answer them all, but I'm trying to read, try and read, try and read through them all. Just because right. you don't want to miss anything juicy that might be in there. That's right. Yeah, we have we are actually having a few uh, website issues. Although it's actually probably a good sign, um, and we're going to be upgrading the server sizes too. We've, we're finding on a Saturday night we're uh, as as well. It went down last uh, weekend, and it's gone down. Yeah, tonight. it's gone down tonight as well. Uh, it's simply because of the amount of people that are on there watching and listening to things, which is good. But obviously, the more people that go on. Uh, the bigger server sizes we need, so we're gonna we're gonna have to upgrade them. Uh, and so, I thought it had been done this week, but I'll have to speak to the guys who do it for us. Maybe they have done it. Maybe there's even more people going on. I don't know. But as I speak now, the website's down at just about eight o'clock on Saturday, the fifteenth of the tenth. Um, I've also we've also got uh, Sheep Farm Studios two on YouTube, YouTube, and I've been putting a few uh, videos on there. I'm going to try and keep it. Sheep Farm Studios, the original one, away and just puts trailers on and maybe a few shows and the live shows and things like that and just keep it nice and tidy on there. Um, and if you want to subscribe to Sheep Farm Studios too, uh, you can. There's a few videos on there and I seem to be adding about, I don't know, 10 a week or something like that uh, when I get stuff sent through. Uh, with, this month, we've already produced four shows, Chris, um, which might indicate why the up surge in usage yeah. of the websites happened as well. <clears throat> Um, this it's will also be the looking, fifth. At getting, looking at getting comments back as well, haven't we? The reason we took comments off the website was because of terms and conditions, not for any other reason than that, really. Yeah, well, the, co- the comments are, are useful, although it just seems like another job to me. Uh, but it, it, well, we do need them because we need the interaction, really, you know? Yeah. And it'd be something else that Chris will, Chris will look at. But, but, but what I mean terms is, of we conditions, didn't, we yeah. didn't get rid of them because we were like, oh, we don't want any comments. Yeah. It was because you were worried about. Uh, the legal implications. Legal implications. Well, the, the, again, the issue is that once you start things like this up, you end up having to have a, a slight corporate side to it, whether we like it or not, um, because you've got to obey by the rules and regulations. And uh, I like the comments section because the comments on this website were totally different to the ones on the YouTube mm. channel. Different kind of people comment on the uh, Different website. kind of people, and there were a good interaction between when the show were released about yeah. the subjects that were in there, etc. Um, yeah, there were, there were better comments on there than on YouTube. Well, just um, different. I mean, a bit more in depth, a bit more uh, different kind of folk doing it, really. 
So, I mean, we've done five shows already. This will be the fifth one. Um, and it's the 15th. So we've done quite a lot of shows this week, not even this month. And it doesn't even feel like that's the benefit of the membership side um, because it's freed a lot of my time up, which means I can produce more shows. Yeah. that That's the benefit. It's freed a lot of time up, um, just not just on my time, but Chris has been at a reduce his hours in, in the kitchen. So, again, that's what we're doing. Oh, no, I mean, so, me reducing hours in the kitchen means me answering emails and doing some of the back house stuff that you don't have to think about. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we're also going to record uh, the last part of the Schwabian agenda, which might be in another week or so, but definitely by the end of the month, uh, the last part, the Machiavellian parasite class. We did the first one, I did about two hours, just over two hours on that, about the uh, board of trustees, which will yeah, be back into this month. And I reckon that on its own will be another two or three hours long um, with some of these uh, critters that are in there. And, yeah, so we'll have done five hours on the board of trustees then, which is a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of podcasting. Anyway, that sort of housekeeping updates over with. Uh, we're going to try and Kerber's uh, lingo, not necessarily bad language, but lingo. You know, you can swear as much as you want on YouTube; they don't care. But yeah. you, you can't use it. horrible things, but you can't yeah, yeah. certain things. Yeah, you can watch people falling off the motorbikes and all sorts of stuff and getting into accidents. That's all right, yeah. but. Um, so we'll try and get this on on uh, on YouTube for the first hour. Um, and Chris, I think you're just about to open another bottle of wine, aren't you? Or a bottle of wine. Yeah, I've actually had a glass of wine already because I just had my dinner with right. um, Mrs. Nipper. But I've got a nice... What, what, which piss is it tonight? Pina Taj Malbec. Right. Have you have you drunk that one that that uh, couple gave you when we went down to our yes. treat? <laughs> you drunk it? Right. I, did, I did it the other night. Were it nice? It was lovely. Yeah. It's a good job, really, right. isn't it? Well, to be honest, I was in on my own. Mrs. had gone out, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to treat myself and have that nice bottle of wine. Yeah. I've, I've served my Mrs. Witch Piss, and I'll have this not, expensive no, one to like myself. She didn't drink red wine anyway. So, but it was delicious. Thank you for that bottle of wine. Really there you go. Um, um, so, yeah, in, in October, we've, we've uh, spoken with uh, Dr. Mark Nester. Um, yeah. Mark Devlin, we're going to call him Dr. Mark Devlin then. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Professor, Matt Lamman, <laughs> Professor Matt Lamman, Professor Matt Lamman, and His Royal Highness, Highness uh, Matt Majerski, um, King, King Surgeon Matt Majerski. Yeah, which I was going to just put live tonight, and obviously the, the back end's crashed down, so I can't do anything. So hopefully that'll be tomorrow when we do that. But I mean, you look at them four people we've seen there, and every one of them brings something different to oh, the brilliant. table. Fantastic, um, and all of them bring some um, a different edge. To, yeah. um, I think we're gathering, we're gathering a little posse of um, other folks to talk to, are Yes, yeah. Um, and, yeah, from, from Mark Devlin. I mean, th- this one with Mark Devlin were different because although he's released his book, we were having a different type of chat. And yeah. I quite I like that. Matt Lamman is always going to be lively. And, in fact, yeah. we're lining another one up, hopefully, with Matt Lamman. Oh, well, we're discussing uh, doing one with Matt about films, which would be fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're, we're already having a back to and throw about it. It'll probably be a while down the line, but yeah. that'd be great fun. I mean, it'd just be a bit of fun as well. It's something different. Yeah. It? A bit well, what we're going to do is Dad we're going to watch <laughs> four or five, <laughs> six films, two each or whatever, uh, do we? and we'll just talk about those films, Yeah. Uh, about what, what what we think, the predictive programming, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I might do a bit of background on who made the films and yeah, yeah. Uh, what have you. Um, and, That's uh, right, Miley. Yeah. Um, what we've got coming up in back in the November, I think about 18th, we're going back on Rise Above. Um, right. I've done quite a lot of research on um, because we're doing the research on um, the Machiavellian parasite cl- class, the Schwabian agenda of the board of trustees. One of the members is Al Gore, and obviously, the guys on Rise Above call it Al Gore Rhythm. And I just thought that it was quite a good one to do on their show because it's part of the Al Gore Rhythm. Um, I haven't been on there for a while, so that I think it's 18th that's going to be, I reckon. Um, I've done most of that um, research anyway now. Um, some quite interesting stuff, actually, on there. But anyway, we won't get into that now. One interesting piece of research that sort of fell into me, I can't say it fell into my lap, but Jacko sent me, like you did with Schwab when he sent me that video, um, when he said we have infiltrated uh, the <laughs> cabinets of the world. Uh and then it set me on a track to do all this research on World Economic Forum. Um, the one connection that I, I were really interested in, 
and that was the, the Rothschild Schwab connection. And there's a lot of people, ah, oh, he's related, but I've never seen any evidence of this um, uh, Schwab connection. And over the past year, I must have done, uh, since we did Schwab, the first one, up to this point, I've literally done, I must have done hundreds of hours, at least. Uh, anyway, let's say tens of hours uh, researching World Economic Forum and Schwab. And I can sit here today and say that I'm now very confident that there is definitely a Rothschild Schwab genetic connection. Yeah. Um, you can never say 100%, right? Because I weren't, I weren't living in 1400s. But um, from what I've seen on the genealogy side, there's definitely a connection. Not only that, but he's also connected to uh, Karl Marx, who wrote the Communist Manifesto. Um, and he and Karl Marx is connected to the Rothschilds as well. And many other prominent families like the Warburgs of Jekyll Island Federal Reserve fame and the Hoppenheimers family. They're, they own a lot of the diamonds, de Burs, and all this type of stuff that were linked to the Rothschilds. And the, Wer the Werthermeyer uh, family, who are fashion uh, and own Chanel. Right. And so many of these other families, and there's many more uh, like that. Uh, I've got lineage within this connection, prominent connection. Uh, the lineage is from the, the Bacharach name. Uh, this was the original Rothschild name. This information is from uh, numerous sources as well. That's why I'm quite confident that um, there is a link there. Um, it was from a research done called the Frankfurt Project, which was a genetic project where they were trying to find all these ancient uh uh, Jewish lineages. Um, it weren't from like some bloody far right group or anything like that. This was actually um, from a, a Jewish project. Yeah. Um, and also um, a genetic researcher called Rachel Unkefer or Unkefer. Uh, she's, she's sort of like an expert in obviously genealogy and she's done a lot of research. Are these people aren't conspiracy researchers? They're not trying to dig up something to go, ha ha, we found it. Um, they're like the quite mainstream academia findings. Right. So that's why it's that's why it's interesting. But for a quick overview, the lineage goes back to early 1400s, um, 1414, around that time to be precise. And a guy called Rabbi Man Bacharach, and Man is is actually changed for Ben. So that that we hear that a lot in uh, uh, Jewish names, um, and from there, Rabbi Abraham Bacharach in the late fourteen hundreds, the living Schwab Klaus Schwab and the living Rothschild, like say Evelyn de Rothschild, they have a common grandfather fifteen generations ago called Rabbi Menachem Man Bacharach, around thirteen ninety five. Right. You can't get much clearer than that, yeah? Sure. Rabbi Abraham's, Abraham's son was Rabbi Shmuel Schwab. Therefore, all subsequent Schwabs have a common Bacharach Rothschild bloodline. Right. Ding dong. Yeah, ding a ling dong. Given this added information here, what are the odds that on the morning of September 11th, 2001, Sir Klaus Schwab would be sitting with Rabbi Arthur Shiner at Parkey Synagogue in New York when two holograms floats into the World Trade Centers <laughs> without leaving, leaving any debris uh, from <laughs> of, of wings, engines, or fuselages. So we've we've said this before, haven't we? We said he were there on that particular day. And there were a picture in the Jewish Telegraphic Agency which shows Sir Klaus Schwab and Rabbi Shiner and Israel's chief Ashkenazi rabbi, Israel Maya Lau, lighting candles at ground zero which is the Hollywood brand name, as we know, for two black cubes where the towers once stood. Now we know probably why this picture and why he's there with these guys and why the, it's significant. Um, yeah, there, there is evidence of, and I mentioned this, we, meant, we talked about this in the Schwab three and a half hour odyssey that we did a year ago, over a year ago, um, that Schwab's birth mother was Jewish and left Germany in a hurry in 1938 with her sons, Hans Ernst Schwab. The Rothschild, Bacharach and Schwab, have a co as I said, have a common ancestor 
from 15 generations ago. Schwab's earliest ancestor from Basel in Switzerland, and Basel is where, you know them t- that tower, them triangle from Roche Pharmaceuticals, I told you. Yeah. Their head yeah. office, their head office in Basel. Can you remember I said it looked like the Inca pyramids. Yeah. Right. But they they had a before they built those, they had another one that was they never built. It was looked like the Tower of Babel. Yeah. In Basel. <laughs> um. Anyway, the guy who was Schwab's ancestor was Count the Count of Nemero, Nemero uh, called Ulrich Schwab, a Knights Hospitalier commander from 1298 to 1315, who helped Pope Clement V to consolidate the Habsburg power, destroy the Knights Templ- Templar, and to transfer Templar banks to the Templar Hospitalitas, Hospitalis, sorry, which is now the Vatican Bank, the Knights of Malta, and the Bank of England. So, yeah, that's good. I'm going to do a full uh, rundown on this, but I wanted to stake my flag in the ground before I did it um, and say this is it's quite fundamental, is it, this really? It changes the whole concept of not just about Schwab, really, but when you see all these people are linked. I did some other research as well on – I started some research and I called it the dynasties. And I put in all these names and I were adding to these names. This is in between the other research. Uh, we're pulling bits out of the research that I've done and putting it into these people. So the Rockefellers were thought were, were came from um um Jewish background as well. Um and they came over with a migration into England and into America from Germany. Um and a lot of these were uh working with um, royal courts. So they were the usury uh, people, a lot of these people who were just mentioned today. Um, yeah, so that's it, really. Um, the Order of the Knights of the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem. That is the Holy Order of the Catholic, or a Catholic, modern Catholic military order, ed- headquartered in the Kingdom of Jerusalem until 1291. So these... Can you remember that when, when uh, Catherine, um, who emails us quite a bit, she she said to me that the sovereign military order of Malta issues biometric diplomatic passports. Yeah. Um, which is full and fully compliant with all rule, rules. Well, it's so, funny you say that, as a fact, because I was thinking today, um, I was going to do a collage for Instagram. If anyone wants to look at the Instagram, uh, sheetfam.co.uk and Instagram. I put some pictures on there. And, and I was going to do a collage of the Maltese cross and who wears it. Because we all know the Queen's got it on her garb. The Nazis had it on their garb. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's everywhere. All these have got it on this stuff that oh, I've just been mentioning. Exactly. So these people must be connected. Why are they all wearing this? It's like, I don't know, they're all wearing If it was a swash sticker, they'd all be asking questions, but it's not. It's a different yeah. it's a difference. Well, when Tony, that Order of the Garter, what Tony B. Liar got, they all had, they had that cross on as well. Yeah. So it's the same cross all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. It's everywhere. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it, there's, there's too, too many coincidences for it to be a coincidence. Mm. When you see all these things linked, it's like yeah, if you've got one blood... Put them all together in a picture, wouldn't it? Because, um, very interesting. Yeah, it you would. See, yeah. You can even go back yeah. through, you know, the historical ones as well. Yeah. Yeah, Pope's it would be covered in it. Nazis covered in it. Queen's covered yeah. in it. Yeah. All these nutters you're Queen, Queen's, Queen's not around uh, now. <laughs> um, no, yeah, but they are. <laughs> yeah. But, they, but, yeah. But um, it's King Charles now. King Charles III. King I can't think of King Charles without thinking of a Spaniel. <laughs> um, Probably about right. Did you see that video I put on the other week of Liz Truss? I mentioned it with Mark Nester, um, where she actually says, I'm a proud... So she gets voted in as Tory leader, prime minister, etc. Ah, yeah, yeah. And she's at a, a CFI uh, meeting. And if anybody doesn't know what a CFI meeting is, it's the Conservative Friends of Israel. So it links nicely into what we've just been discussing there. And she actually said, I'm a proud Zionist. So she she's at a Friends of Israel event, and she's a proud Zionist. And and, I, and my caption was, 
now we know who she works for. And think, this is who these that, people... Do you think that's the headquarters for Israel? Uh, I don't know. It, it seems... To, it's strange, isn't it, how the Balfour Agreement that basically just give one of the Ro- Rock of, uh, Rothschilds um, permission to go take over, and it took them after, until after the Second World War to do that. But they were still there in, in the Holy Lands, as they call them. Um, trying to take over and keep the people out that were living there, and it's been going. But this is this thing's been going on, right back to Templars, right back to old times. Yeah, it, it's been going on and on and on, which is strange, isn't it? And what yeah. what was the drawback to there? If you think about the Crusades from Britain, if they're if they happened the way we've been told they did, how did they know to go to Jerusalem mm. if they were so backward? They didn't have any. How did they know that to go there? I mean, it must not only would it imagine taking an army from here by horse and cart across to France and then wherever they went from there, um across to uh, North Africa. Yeah. They had a lot of time. Or, in, well, I mean <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know if you've been following it, Chris, but um Quasi Quateng's gone. Uh, yesterday, um, and he's just another one of the him and this trust woman like Johnson. I heard somebody say that Johnson about Johnson. It said, um, "List trust is that bad." Now we know how good Boris Johnson was, or worse to that effect. And I'm yeah. thinking these people are fucking insane. Yeah, that's how it works, isn't it? You just forget the last one. What about? I mean, that 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 quasi quite. I'd never even heard of him to be honest with you. Well, we mentioned him a few times. Yeah. But, but what I mean is, you, you'd never seen him in the public eye until he turned up, did all that, and then he sodded off because he got sacked. And it's just yeah. another face that you can blame, but you don't know where he is. He's gone. Like yeah. Johnson. Yeah, yeah, like Johnson, like Witte, like all these other Valens, uh, Van Tampon, all gone. All gone, Mickey, um, yeah, Matt Medazalan, the, all of them just disappeared. But in, in theory, it's the same crew that are running it, aren't they? Mm. You know, the it's same it's crew it's are always. I mean, Quasi Quaton, I mean, as I keep mentioning, he seemed to have been funded quite a lot by Le Circle, and apparently he was the chairman of Le Circle. Um, he worked for Audi Asset Management, which I mentioned Audi Asset Management. Uh, Audi, um, he, I forget his first name now, he's married to one of the, his wife is part of the Barclay family, or no, he's part of the family that set up Barclays Bank. So the, these people are, you know, they're, they're not. It's like they they put these people in these jobs. Um, I mean, he pay, like I say, work for J.P. Morgan as well. So a bit like Sunak and uh, Rabid Jabed and all these other people, they're put into these positions, ready, like sleeper cells, like we keep saying, Manchurian candidates in a different type of way. Of they're not there to assassinate an individual or, a, but they're there to, right. Like a like a sniper, we bring him in. He's only been there three weeks. He's fucked everything up. Now he's gone. Hmm. We'll bring a new person in. It's a new face, and and he can't do any worse now. Yeah. Are these people smile in front of camera and laugh, you know, like nothing's happened. Yeah, but all you see of these people is him getting in our cars, wearing high vis in factories, and wandering around. Yeah. And you don't see anything. It's, it's so blatantly just a stage show. So blatant. It is, yeah. It is. It is. Now, now, Jeremy Hunt. Yeah, I said Hunt. He's taken over the job from Crazy Quartin, Crazy Quasi Quarting. Um, and Je- Jeremy Hunt is a descendant of Sir Streisham Hunt, Sir Streisham Master, right name, that in it, a pioneer of the East India Company. He's also a distant relation of the royal family. Surprise, surprise. Um, and Sir Oswald Mosley, which is the Nazi guy in the uh, Second so World would, War. You would suggest he's he, he's quite high up in the bloodline, so they're bringing him in to do something probably a little bit special. Yeah. He's a cousin of Dame Agnes Hunt, pioneer of orthopedic nursing. His father was Admiral Sir Nicholas John Strasham Hunt. He was commander-in-chief of the fleet from 1985 to 1987. These 
you know, no, none of our friends, right? Yeah, they've all gone to nice schools and that, but forget that. Just put the schools to one side. Look at the upbringing. I mean, Quasi Quetting's dad, right, was an economist and he was a Commonwealth sec- secretariat. So he's part of organi- the economist for the Commonwealth, even though the Commonwealth doesn't exist, apparently. That's who these people are, you know. It, it, it goes beyond nepotism, doesn't it? For all, I mean, Quasi Quetting's a black guy, and I think they're from Ghana, his family. Ghana was heavily used in for, for years and years and years. We don't know what is... If you look at Condoleezza Rice, and she's 50% uh, white or 25... Uh, more than, she's more white than she's black, for argument's sake, right? How do we know what Quasi Quetting is and what his ancestry is? Yeah. Well, it takes a couple of generations, doesn't it? To it takes a couple of generations to roots to snuff it out. We don't know whether, um, and I'm not saying he is, but let's just hypothesize for a second that he's got a royal bloodline. We don't know that. No. One of them illegitimate it's not, it's royal it's bloodlines. Two, it's, only, it's only two generations when you can take someone from white to black or vice versa. But again, I'm almost half black. She looked yeah. black. Yeah, she did. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're 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 only twenty five percent spook, and we're yeah. quite dark. I mean, your nostrils are massive, so. I can't even see your face. No, that's not my face. That's a pair of binoculars. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think it is definitely. Uh, given the genealogy that I've just found with uh, Schwab and that links all that stuff back, hmm. nothing would surprise us anymore that these people have got some sort of link there. And and the irony is, when you're searching for these links, right, they close them off. So I'll use a scenario. One of the systems that I uh, use is called uh, Gini, ironically. Yeah? Um, G-N-I. And that was started, I forget the guy's name now, but he was one of the PayPal mafia. Yeah. So he's, he's one of the guys that um, made money out of PayPal who are now uh, silencing everybody. and he now owns this company that you can do genetic searches on. So we know what's going to happen there, don't we? Or what's happening. You get to a certain point and you can't go any further because it's closed off. It says private or it, something happens there. And that's when you know that there's something they're hiding. Because if, if up, to that pro, up, to, up to that point, up to 1700 and you can see everything, and then after 1700 you can't see shit, why would they hide it all? Why would you just hide it up to 1700? Dropping everyone's knowledge down their memory, hole, so to speak. Yes, controlling it, controlling the knowledge. Um, yeah, I put three videos on over last week on Sheep Farm Studios 2, as I mentioned before, um, about World War Z. Um, oh, yeah, I watched that. Did you see the 3D CGI uh, yeah. guy? Literally, with Zelensky in the middle of it. Yeah, with all them cameras around him yeah. on a green screen. Did you see because when they shrank him and made him grow as well? That reminded yeah. me of the Queen with Let's Trust. Ah, yeah, yeah. When they were just mapping him in, they just slotting yeah. him in and they're moving him up and down. Yeah, because when you see him talking and he's in the street, uh, supposedly in, in Ukraine, he's not in the street because it's quite blatantly obvious he's not in the street. Yeah, and then you yeah, think because... back to that Biden, Biden video where he's hand went through that microphone. Don't you believe that? Don't you think that's real? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was blatantly frigging obvious, wasn't it? That, that yeah. was real. Yeah. And it um, wasn't even, he, I don't know. Really, I, I just don't understand why he'd want to fake an interview in a car park or wherever the hell they were. I don't know. It's just so unglamorous and pointless, wasn't it? But but, but again, the, the stupidity of it all is that it only takes Ed from out of light, for argument's sake, to stand and look at that for, for two minutes to see his arm going through microphone uh, a couple of times. And and obvious that he's not there where he says he says he is. Um, and then you've got that video there with Jelenski's and that green screen. So how, is he always in the green screen? Has he ever well, been real? Well, I think they paid for like when when Biden. I mean, we'll get to Biden in a sec. But when Biden does a talk at the White House, they paid ten million dollars or some ridiculous to build a film studio. So I think it changed when Trump left. They built a purpose film studio. Uh, for his talk, so he's not even so in the White House. He's probably still the kind of toilet about three yards away. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, 
Um, and, but if you, as soon as you've seen Zelensky on that green screen on that video, all bets are off. Up for, everything's up for question. Yeah. Every, I mean, you're everything will everything will for question anyway. Of, but yeah, yeah. You sent me that picture of Zelensky um, dressed in like a LGBT. What was it? What was it? I don't know what it leather was. and stuff. He did. He did a. He did a video. He was dressed, yeah. dressed in drag, basically. And I put it on our Instagram, and it got deleted. And he said, "This is not this. This photo has been tampered with. It's not a real photo." But why delete yeah. it? If you put if you put a picture of me on there in drag, uh, and it had been um, yeah, a fancy dress uh, party or something like or, that, or if it had been photoshopped, they wouldn't delete yeah. it, would they? And say this in the real yeah. photo. Why did they delete that picture? I could see you in a leather vest. It's <laughs> 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 so, so fabric. I don't have one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about suede? <laughs> I definitely wear a spurred one. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah it, it, well, as soon as you see Zelensky, right, and you you look at his background, he owned a production company, he's an actor, he played president, yada, 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 also, yada. When you when you think about it, right, I know this sounds stupid, but, well, it doesn't sound stupid, but <laughs> you would get an actor, wouldn't you? Because if if he's acting those parts out, those scripts that are telling him, they'd do a better job. And I don't just, I know it's obvious to say that he reads a script better, but experience with green skiing, stand over there, do this, do that, you know, you just make it quicker and smoother and get yes. someone else in, yeah. train them on the job to do it. I asked my mate, actually, who was in advertising, Butler, and he he said, because I always said, why, why, why did they get, you know, there's loads of people around, why, did, why pay that much for actors to do, you know, voiceovers on commercials? Because they do it quicker and more professional. They just go bang, yeah. bang, bang, and it's done and they go on. Whereas yeah. if you've got us in there doing bungling around, do it a bit, you know, do it a bit more passion, a bit less passion, a bit more, you'd be there all day. Yeah. Those guys just go in and just bang it out in no time. Yeah. And that, yeah. that's what it looked like when I saw the Zelensky thing. He was there. He knew what he was doing. He was stood like this. You know, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You, you, you could see, yeah. you could see he's, why. He stood with that. Well, when you see him doing them, you see him with that blonde wig on and stuff like that, uh, and he's joking around and doing dressed as a tranny and all this type of stuff. Um He's trying to be natural doing that, but you can tell he's acting. And then, because he's not a fun, he probably isn't a funny bloke, right? Well, he's just now, trying to add. Now, yeah. When you look at him now, every picture you see, he's got that like stern look scowl. on his face because he's yeah. so serious and yeah. know, that quiet, brooding, uh, you know, guy on his own against the world kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. He's, he's clearly bullshit, isn't it? And the no, fact that you got Sean Penn, do you remember when it all first kicked off? Sean Penn was miraculously in Ukraine. It does look similar to Sean Penn, though, doesn't it? You got Sean Penn to me, right? Looks if he put a blue rim wig on him, it looks like an old woman. But he does look similar to Sean Penn, doesn't he? He's got a similar look to Sean Penn, yeah. not exactly like him, but yeah. he does look. It makes you wonder whether they were topping his acting skills up. What getting Sean Penn over there to give him some yeah. pointers? Yeah. yeah, because when he hear that guy talking, I forget his name now. The guy on who was running the uh, the video, um, I'll get it in a sec. Um, he was when he talks through it. He was actually saying that um, you know we need to get him more uh, presence on screen and stuff like this. Martin Williams and Martin Williams works for BBC, Sky, Channel Four, ITV. He's a three D and a hologram expert in filming. Um, he, he do, he's done uh, Attenborough's uh, stuff. So th- then you've got a question: Is Attenborough and has he ever been? Actually stood there with a gorilla or a or a tiger. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you, you've got you've got to, you've got to ask yourself now that I mean I mean we we do ask ourselves, but but and everybody listening probably does as well. But most of this stuff that's on TV now is a Hollywood blockbuster, isn't it? You, you can't trust any of it. Do you know, I used to watch a bit of news objectively. I still go through Daily Mail online uh, objectively to send look at articles for us, but you just you watch it now, it just fills you with rage, genuine rage, but even more so through the nonsense because you're just like, F me, it's so, so, so blatant, isn't it? Yeah. The bullshit. It is. I don't believe a thing of it. Nothing. No, no. And, and when you see the pictures of World War Z over there, when you see that uh, bridge, I know that were in Crimea, meant to be in Russia. But even that looked like um, some off, uh, like Born Identity, or you know, some some sort of superhero film that had happened. Well, yeah, uh, and that, that Batman film, didn't it? Blue yeah. But 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 we're, but they were using it day after apparently, and yet it, you could see it all on fire and collapsed. And it's like, did it re- did that 
Well, they, you know, they, I'm not saying it they didn't, but hey. Well, they using it Apparently, they were using it again. They have to one side of it. Whereas if it's a structural explosion like that, you'd be out of be out of use to get it all checked out. Or, well, I would have thought so, but I, yeah, look, I'm going on what I was told. It was you were using it there after just because they had a camera on it and it was being used. But whether it again, that could be a stage thing as well. So I, I can't trust everything on there. But but have even no some idea it, at all. One thing I am 100 percent sure of, right? When I watch that Ukraine stuff on the news on BBC, it's bollocks. 100 percent bollocks. Yeah. Well, again, there was that BBC newsman where he's diving around, making out that he's getting blown up. And then a, an old woman's walking up lane behind him with a shopping. Yeah. Like she'd just come from Lidl. <laughs> and they always they always pixelate the background so you can't see what's happening. And if you look closely, you can see cars driving around. Like, mm. exactly. but any, all in films look like it, it's sort of like a, a, an Hollywood blockbuster blowing, blowing a, a, a skyscraper up. But Ryan Reynolds is in or someone like that. Yeah. So it looks like one of those films. But like I always say, they, other than the rusty tanks, the the bricks just look like they've been there for six months, don't they? And the rest. You know, and they, when, yeah, yeah, and the rest. But you know when they say it's got you know bombed by Russians yesterday, yeah. it just looks like bollocks to me. Yeah. I'm sure there's shit going on somewhere, but... Yeah, I'm sure people are getting killed, true. sadly, and it's people that, again, don't deserve to be. But and again, talking of green screens, then we're going to that... Um, the space station video, um, when them two women were talking about that's, hair. That's weird as hell, that is. Yeah, it's strange. I need to check the backgrounds of them two just to make sure what that, they, they, that were real. That, as in re- a real fake, but a right, real, right. Uh, uh, they were really astronauts. Um, right. Because that is the type of thing they are filming, though. Um, there, was that, there was that film, I forget, Jacko sent me this today, and I forget of a name now. She was an astronaut. And she were pretending that bag of crisps were floating away, and it had that guy in that green thing on green screen lifting it up and moving it away like that. Um, and they put it down to that she were sort of rehearsing no zero gravity or something like that. But why would right, they have just a, a green screen? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's you know even all these things like that, like Biden. I mean, look at Biden, right? Johnson were bad enough, but look at Biden. Trump were bad enough. I and mean, people still think Trump is on their side. Um, I, I can't get my head around that one. But um, if you look at Biden, how can anybody think that Biden is any anything other than useless? Well, I don't even think he's useless. I think it's a piss tech. I think it's taking the piss out of everybody. He, he were on, he were, on uh, he were doing a talk and he mentioned a woman who had died a month ago. And it, it, like, it, like she was... She was, a, I think, she was a senator. Oh, and such and such. Uh, where is she, by the way? I thought she'd be here today. Oh, she must be off today. And she died a month ago. Right. And then there was the one where he said, "Take your jab because hurricane season is coming." I mean, <laughs> right, but do you know what? I actually think yeah, he's possibly a guy, right, with a Mission Impossible style mask on. Yeah, and they are literally taking the piss out of us. Yeah. If if you believe that that human being is running anything, yeah. and also you know when you look at pictures when he was younger, whether it's probably a different guy, he look he's got a ferocious look in his eyes, hasn't he? Yeah. He ain't got a ferocious yeah. look in his eyes. No, he's got a dead fish look. Same with Putin. When you look at pictures of Putin when he was younger, he looks pretty fucking scary to me. He's got yeah. like a dead, dead scared to. Me. Well, again, now he did, I don't know what he looks like now. Putin worked for KGB. So, he looked like a KGB yeah. guy, didn't he? You know, yeah. Pictures of him. He's, he's, yeah. His eyes, he's got that deadpan. It's, it's something you can't, you can't make up that look. I don't think. No, no. It, we've been getting a lot of comments about our conversations about seeing the moon during the day, haven't we? And I think a lot of people are noticing this. Why? Why all of a sudden are people noticing this, Chris? Because one, one thing is, I can't remember, and I'm not saying it didn't happen. I can't remember when I was younger and growing up through the last five or six years. Remember, maybe my mind's been wiped, I don't know, but I can't remember seeing the moon and the sun out at the same time. I'm not saying it didn't happen, by the way. I I'm remember saying... seeing it over the last few years. Yeah, a few years, yeah, last few years, yeah, yeah. But recently, it's high in... I took a picture put it on our Instagram, and a lot of people said the same. One fella said he's seven-year-old noticed it, and I told you my four-year-old yeah. noticed it. And the four-year-olds are pointing me out and saying that shouldn't be there. Um, but it's high in the sky. The, the, it was nine o'clock in the morning, and I took a picture on my way home from dropping Nipper at school. The moon was high in the sky. And the sun was half up 
which was there. I mean, I'm not Brian Cockend, but that doesn't make any sense to me. No, it didn't I mean, I'm sure I'm sure they could come up with lots of physics and graphs and shit to tell you why it's there, but yeah, even a hockey stick, basic, maybe a hockey inter- stick, <laughs> intellectual level. You've got a circle, supposedly, yeah, and you've got two circles above it. That means supposedly over three, supposedly over three quarters. The the whole thing is in not just moonlight; it's in dark blackness. Yeah, blackness. Not the, not moonlight because there's no moon down there in that bottom three quarters of the whatever it is. Yeah. It must be jet blackness, like the dark side of the moon blackness. Yeah. And if anyone's got an answer for that, I mean, you're welcome to give it because I don't know what it is. Yeah. Well, look, but sometimes things are back to the simple, simple solution, aren't they? The, the simple version of it is the answer. And you can yeah. come up with physics and, oh, no, it's because there's bouncing light off. But, oh, hang on a minute. Fuck off. I can see the moon there. I can see the sun there. Can yeah. you please explain it to me? Yeah. Again, it's like the, is the sun hot or cold? Well, it's red hot. Well, how come when you go in a plane at 30,000 uh, feet, it, it gets colder? It's minus 60, even when you're flying over Egypt. Egypt. And without being funny, so I've always thought this, right, fire, right? So say you're sunbathing, your nose, or you're walking around in the sun, your nose gets burnt more well, yours than your does. cheek. <laughs> your nose gets burnt more than your cheek. Yeah. Your top lip gets burnt more than your bottom lip. <laughs> <clears throat> now, when you think about it, your nose, right? Your goat lip gets burnt a bit more than mine. The <laughs> sun's 90 odd million miles away, right? Is it 91 million miles away? I forgot about that. And you, but yet, yeah, your nose would be an inch. It, or is it 91? Is it, they say it's 91 million miles away? It is, isn't it? I think it is, yeah. I think it is. I'm not sure. Not quite yeah. that, but, so your nose is like an inch close to the sun, but yeah, it gets burnt more than your cheek, which is an inch further away. That and makes sense. That's diffused over that 91 million miles. Now, let's say, for instance, the sun's eight or 10 miles away. That would make a little bit more sense, wouldn't it? Would it? Yeah. Well, I, I would say. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I would. Sure uh, a physicist can prove. No, actually, wrong, Chris, you're wrong. wrong. It's 93 million. Oh, is it? I didn't yeah. know. I thought it was uh, But yeah, but there'll be still some. Fa- but again, it's nice and threes, isn't it? Nines and threes, always. Um, but this again, it comes back to that moon. The moon stuff we were talking about. Uh, Matt Lamman interested me about that. That is some kind of energy drain, and maybe that being up during the day is for that reason. Or maybe something's going on, right? No, certain folk know about. We don't obviously, that. and. The past two years of nonsense is literally to brain fuck people enough so they don't notice it. Maybe they yeah. don't notice it. Maybe people don't notice it. Well, people don't, don't notice it, do they? Only if got more of like us that about. notice it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm going to start asking a few people actually, just like, you know, not and just see what they do, what they say. Well, it, it's yeah. the same sort of question as is this or not? Or did the teacher uh, Spanish deja flu at, um, at school? Because mm. the answer to all those has always been, oh, no, no. Uh, um, no, it sun's hot, but how can close? Oh, yeah, that doesn't make sense, does it? You know, so, yeah, but it doesn't matter. Every, yeah, yeah, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't have any effect on my but also, life. also, like we talked about with Matt, um, <laughs> is that, um, yeah, it doesn't matter, does it, if we're into the moon or not? It doesn't make any difference. No, it doesn't make any difference to his lives that we've been lighter for the last 60 years, no. Actually, while we're talking about that, right, just before I came on here yeah, to talk to you, um, we had an email from Ross Holt. And he sent us a few emails, and he was asking about dinosaurs, because uh, we've never actually brought it up, but we always kind of laugh when we talk about dinosaurs. And he was yeah. saying, what's your opinion? Because, um, you know, he's got a kid and he just wouldn't do want to lie to him. I, I, I'm in the same position because I've got a four-year-old. And like I've said before, you notice a lot of this bullshit and lies on kids' pyjamas for some reason, on kids' yeah. toys, unicorns, yeah. dinosaurs, aliens. Rainbows, space, yeah. yeah. Rainbows, all that shit. Well, rainbows are rubbish, you say, but you only need a surface look at dinosaurs to start to very get suspicious yeah. of how much bullshit is involved, don't you? Yes, and you do. I just I sent him a point about it. I said, for starters, no dinosaurs were found. They came up with a theory before they found a dinosaur, but yeah, which is, is a big alarm bell. And there were only elite bloodline, certain rich folk allowed to go and look for the bones to start with. Yeah. And all the bones in museums are real, most of them are real. Yeah. And they're, they're, control, fine, they're, con- they're controlled by our academia and universities, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, museums. yeah. You'll, they'll find an NGO. I, I put one on Instagram a while ago. They found a, a spine and they said, This is from a certain the biggest dinosaur. And they'd found one vertebrae. 
yeah. and decided that the rest of it looked like this. Yeah. That's not how the how, how the hell do you do that? But you don't, you know, do you? you some don't. Jurassic Park, like well, it comes really back to the it comes shit. back to the modeling thing, doesn't it? It comes back more to more modeling, yeah. Yeah, more modeling. And now they're saying, well, dinosaurs, they all had feathers. So for years, a diplodocus with this shiny-headed thing like me, um, wallowing around with a long neck, oh, uh, massive legs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you go to what is it? See My them Mrs. walking through. See them walking through Halifax sometimes. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, My missus uh, from Crystal Palace, right? If you go to Crystal Palace. They've got loads of sculptures of uh, dinosaurs. They look yeah. nothing like the dinosaurs we look at now. Yeah. That were well, you're telling me Steven Spielberg's making it all up. <laughs> well, the fact they've made an Hollywood movie out it tells you something. They've also made a Hollywood movie about um, uh, what's his name, a guy who's been kept captive for twenty five years. Oh, uh, Assange. Assange, and they also made a Hollywood movie about the other guy, uh, the American one. Uh, Same w- thing. Edward Same uh, Snowden. Snowden. Yeah. yeah, instant Hollywood films. Uh, more Hollywood films they are about it, the more bollocks it is. Yeah, that's why there's loads of space. And also, I, I, yeah. the, 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 when you think about the dinosaur thing, why would they? Fly about dinosaurs. I think one of the main reasons is they tell kids it right when they're very young. Kids love dinosaurs; they all do because you think Jesus was dinosaur. And then they say, well, "What happened to the dinosaurs?" Then the teacher says, "You were wiped out by a meteorite that hit the earth, killed everybody, killed them all." And then the kid they planted that seed in the kid's head. And then the kid's thinking, "Fucking hell, that could happen any minute." I mean, yeah. And then any when moment, they see Bruce Willis and moment. Ben Affleck, yeah, yeah. And then he's uh, been fed it more and more as you get older and older and yeah. older. And I would not be surprised if that. I mean, they've just done that dark thing where they shot half that meteorite and sent it on another course. <laughs> we could. <laughs> they've literally done the Bruce Willis uh, yeah. asteroid experiment. I shouldn't even drive that Tesla into it. <laughs> <laughs> just knock it off course do. a bit. Knock it off yeah. course with the Tesla. We yeah. must get it. But, but um, I mean, yeah, going back to dinosaurs, they haven't found a full skeleton for a start. Um, that's always an alarm. The, the ones they have found. What did the thing um, though that most of the skeleton so, just walked off in a different direction? <laughs> they've got. If you look at some of them, they've got the skull right, and it's and it's so fragmented into little pieces. They could, you could build a fucking anything out of it. You could build a statue yeah. of Batman out of it. You know what I mean? Tiny little pieces, and they just stuck it together how they want. Well, the alarm. The alarm. Themselves. Alarm for me is that in the mid eighteen fifties, a lot of things all of a sudden materialized. They found dinosaurs, or they came up with the idea of dinosaurs. They found, uh, obviously, there were Darwin's nonsense. Um, there were genetics. There were it's like, well, it's like all the chemicals, stopped. and it's like history stopped and was restarted, almost yeah. like some kind of re, re, yeah, reinvention, reset, or well, reset. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dare we say? It. But, but dinosaurs are, are part of that uh, genetics thing as well, where you know. That they were a weaker sort, so they got wiped out. We're the stronger ones. We were, you know, it, it all fits into this that side of it as well. And why have they also, never uh, found but, if they laid eggs? Why haven't they found any eggs? And so they can open them up and find a baby dinosaur but, in it. But petrified eggs. Yeah. Why haven't they found any of them? Why haven't they found? Go on, sorry. Why just digging up bones left, right, and center. Day yeah. Day Are you telling me there are only three dinosaurs? Backyard. Yeah. And why did um, they find a new one every year? Uh, T Rex was the biggest thing they found. Three of the bigger ones. No, they found that other one. What other one they found? My dinosaur. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I mean, my youngest, he were into dinosaurs. So going back was, to what Ross, what Ross was saying, hmm. um, they used to ship me up. But going back to what Ross was saying, um, I nearly married one at one point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> and a long time ago. <laughs> a long. Uh, yeah, a long, long time in a, ago. In a land far, far away. <laughs> yeah. In a land the time had forgot. <laughs> in, in, in Burstall, in Bartley. <laughs> eye for an eye, I like that one. Um, where were I? Uh, yeah, anyway, the, the narrative seems like it's been invented mm. to me. The whole... And like you say, around the same period as the Darwin bullshit. Um, yeah. Well, do you know one of the pr- protagonists, protagonists of... Um, Dinosaurs was uh, uh, Thomas Huxley, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. um, of uh, the grandfather of Aldous Huxley, so he came up with the flying dinosaur, right? Um, hypothesis among other stuff as well. And so, you've got, and he was the mentor of H.G. Wells, 
Um, so, we, you know, all of these things, you've got, you're looking at it and it's like, the, right, let, how do we write, rewrite history? Right, we'll come up with dinosaurs, you know, like well, they've never, you know, they, they had more technology in the 1850s to find these dinosaurs or 1800s or whatever it was. Pyramids were, again, that was another one. Um, mm. But anyway, yeah. So, and and th- there was a there was a guy, wasn't there? I forget his name now. But he basically invented the concept of dinosaurs. I forget who it was now. We're an academic anyway. Yeah. I forget who it was. Uh, the man who invented dinosaurs or something like that or came up with it. I don't think that was his name. Mad, mad looking guy with uh, mad dog bollock eyes. Anyway, talking of dinosaurs and fossils, um, I, mean, I put a few videos on of uh, Just Stop Oil. All right. Um, yeah. Which seems to have popped up. These silly twats who are gluing themselves to uh, walls and sitting in the road with Ivy's plastic jackets on, Chris. Ivy's plastic jackets, you know. Uh, <laughs> I noticed the ones who Costa threw, Coffee cups, yeah. Those, those who threw the, the soup at the uh, Van Gogh. I noticed that yeah. Van Gogh had a, um, well, it was in a glass frame. I'm yeah. pretty, I, 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 might, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're not in glass frames most of the time. Right. Which would right. have protected it from the soup. And also, when you watch that video, you see it like that last time it happened. You see it loose. Literally, some of them have just got the uh, camera phones, but you see at least two or three professional camera men there, don't you? One with yeah. a big boom mic. So you're making sure it gets what that stupid bird says. Then they glue their hands to the wall. Just leave them there. Walk away. Yeah, leave them there Take for the a month. Off. Yeah. Take the Van Goghs off the wall. Yeah. Lock the door. Turn the eating off. Turn the eating just off. Just leave them there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah leave them there. Energy. Save some yeah. oil. If they want to, leave, if they want to get themselves off, then from there they can yeah. rip all the fucking skin off. Yeah, off their hand. leave them. Leave yeah, them. leave them in there. I didn't yeah. notice. I did see. In fact, they glue the other arms to fucking wall and all. <laughs> Let them sit there and piss themselves. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, for a bit. And don't listen to them. Just turn the lights yeah, off. Turn the lights off. Turn the lights off. Just turn the lights off. The ones who do it in a row, just put some bollards around them and drive around them. Why, why, why have a, why have a why majority of them got ginger air? Why have they got ginger air? As well. Like, it started with that girl who Is it was part of that thing. Is it 33 single? The orange part. Yeah. yeah. Um, there, there is uh, something odd. I mean, uh, but anyway, the, the, the Just Stop Oil, a couple of them videos on there, there's one of them where she's spraying Scotland Yard. So the, there's, a, there's a girl, that red-haired girl, right? She's gone up with a massive spray can like a thing with a sprayer and she can spray it from like 20 foot away like that and nobody's come out and arrested her I'm going to say it's Scotland Yard is that how you and then, yeah. then about after after she's mouthed off for 10 minutes King Juliet Bravo comes and takes her inside can you imagine me how you did that well why 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 weren't all them stormtroopers out there do you know when that granny were having a cup yeah. of coffee on that a chair in 2020 <laughs> yeah and they dragged her off and yeah. <laughs> knelt on the back and stuff and put handcuffs yeah, yeah, yeah. on her because she didn't have a, a face nappy on. Yeah. Why yeah, weren't them stormtroopers there? Where are they? I mean, this woman sprayed it orange. CC. What they should have done is come out and say, do you know what? We're going to spray this orange. Thanks. Yeah, nice one. No, nice one. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> New logo for uh, Scotland Yard is going to be orange. I, 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 you could have rainbow. I told you about this. You could have made it into a rainbow. <laughs> you could have made <laughs> <laughs> But it is like um, a dystopian sigh up now in it because they can well, do the, that but you can't question the arm spears uh even though the no, is so yeah. ridiculous so was, ridiculous. well even i mean going to arm spears uh we've got to be careful what we say if we're going to try and put the first hour on there but they know it's out there that michelle pfizer all the people that work for that company they know that they've been murderizing people mm. they know this mm. um I got told a story today. I mean, my eldest, uh, somebody he plays football with, somebody who's got epilepsy, who hadn't had a fit for 13 years. He's, he's going to, he were getting married, went to get, went, obviously had his fucking gibbery jabberies before he went, he were getting married abroad, um, had his first epileptic seizure. And he still can't link that it's got a link to that. Um, well, he had, a, had a, an, an epileptic seizure for years. When he had one. At 13 years, he hadn't had one for 13 years. As a spear and kitching a work. That's what I was going to bring up here as well. And it was Mrs. that spotted this. Do you remember? Well, it'd be quite quite funny actually because I think I mentioned it to you and Mark Majerska that 
I said, I couldn't see a link, but I noticed on the news I'd seen, there was a lot of uh, reports, i.e. reports, i.e. advertising discussions about the HRT thing, hormone right. replacement therapy. And I don't know, yeah, I yeah. know what it was at the time. Uh, and that's for women who are starting to change the, uh, what's it called? Menopause. Menopause, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, and I was saying to you and Matt, uh, we, we, were, we were a bunch of blokes and we were baffled by it, but I was saying, I saw it, I, I saw this woman on it talking about it. I'd never heard of it, and I'm taking HRT, even though it's controversial, da da da. But that's weird, I've never heard that before. And she was talking about it like you should know what she's talking about. And then I saw an article, and it was Davina McCall actually had a tannoy somewhere shouting about the fact that she takes HRT, getting ready for the change, da da da. I thought that's weird. And I saw another, I've, I've seen about four or five pieces or discussions about this HRT thing in the last few weeks never heard of it anyway I told my missus and she was saying someone she knows has started the menopause quite early at 40 and then you think hang on a minute is that what it's about are women yeah. going to start starting the menopause early because of the arm spears like it screwed up the periods didn't it and stuff like yeah. that is that is that part of it well and is that is that why there's a discussion in the media about Menopause and HRT. We, we I, I don't know. Well, we do know, really, Chris. That's well, why. I'm just Especially if you wheel out something like uh, Davina McCall. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think she were an ex heroin addict, Davina McCall, uh, if I remember right. rightly. Um, and so you've got people around. like, yeah, you've got people who just, the wheel out, what does Matt Devlin call them? Lifetime actors. They wheel them out uh, when they've got a job to do, they pick one. Uh, tell them they're going to get paid this, and then they go out and do it. Whether they're in the know or not, it's irrelevant, really. They're doing the job for the puppet master, aren't they? Well, I mean, uh, that was just an observation of mine. Whether it's right or not, I don't know. But I think all these things are. When you see uh, something and it, and, it make, and it makes your ears, I think that's weird. You, know, you get your spider sense tingling, and you know you've yeah. got to look. Uh, yeah. And once you start shouting about something, and it's on mainstream TV with, with, a, with a celeb advertising yeah. it, then you know... They're quite a way down the road, aren't they, with it? Yeah. They're covering the tracks. Um, because people used to go through menopause older. Uh, I'm sure 60s. they were older. I think if, yeah, you, were, 50, if, if, you, if, if you were 40 odd, you were, it was early, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, well, I don't think the new professionals on but this subject. Back, back, back to, just back to this stop oil uh, stuff, right? I, I did a bit of research on who funded it. And one that, I mean, there's always a film crew there. We just spoke about that. But there's never any police, no arrests. It's just all this woke bollocks in it. And it's fun that this Just Stop Oil crew, partly funded by Eileen Getty, descendant of the Getty family, who made all the billions in oil. And <laughs> she's funding Just Stop Fucking Oil. Um, and also it's funded by Los Angeles-based Climate Emergency Fund, CEF, um, who fund Just Stop Oil's disruptive prote protests. And they're blamed for the shortages of petrol or fuel across parts of England, and they're all US philanthropists. So do you think them two young girls were paid to do that? Whether well, they were paid or they believe what they're doing, it, yeah. yeah. It, it, they're like, um, it's like a, a, a sect, isn't it? Um, like it's one of cult. these cult-type things, because you see their eyes, they do believe what they're saying. Mm. Um, should we take control and take care of the environment? Yes. But you're also, looking for... You know, you, you know it's all in the 20s, those ones who are yeah. stuff like that. People get right just when they're in the 20s. You know, I, uh, I don't know, Chris, because some of these these knobheads that were sat in road that people were pulling off and throwing onto curb, right? Yeah, they're like the older end ones, aren't they? Yeah, they, they were they, older They end believe ones. what they're doing, don't they? They're, they're, mm. they're, they're, all, they're all nuts, man. And and should we take more care of planet, whatever it is, plane, whatever it is, I said planet then. Uh, yes, we all know that. There's no problem with that. Nobody, I don't think anybody with a brain has got an issue with saying we should recycle a few bits and bobs here and there. Uh, but we, we didn't end, invent McDonald's and all this other shite. Um, not that I go there. But the CEO of the Climate Emergency Fund is a woman called Margaret Klein Solomon. I wonder what background she might be. Uh, and in the garden, it says that this year, the CEF made grants of 1.7 million to activists in 25 countries, including UK, US, Australia, Canada, France, Germany, and Switzerland. It has a particular focus on the UK with 650,000 given this year alone to groups including Just Stop Oil and Extinction Rebellion. Minimum 650 grand. 
to promote yeah. that shite. Yeah. And Extinction Rebellion, as we know, are funded by Sir Chris Hon. We mentioned that, who Rishi Sunak used to work for. So these people are throwing uh, gander soup on Van Gogh's and sitting in the road and spray painting uh, 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 Scotland Yard and stuff like that. They they don't even think it, that they're being funded by these oligarchs that are a part of this worldwide movement of to benefit or to um, subdue human travel and all this other stuff. They just think they're doing the righteous thing. Yeah. And by doing a righteous thing, they're actually send, putting us all down plug hole. Hmm. They're not fucking thinking about it. Are they? They're not thinking about what they're doing. Well, they're not because they, you look at their eyes and they're just, they've gone. They've gone. This, I did this, notice this, one of those girls who was glued yeah. himself to that wall. I did notice there were some more pictures of other protests, pretty yeah. well taken pictures as well. Yeah. You know, getting yeah. carried off by copper and stuff. But again, it goes back to that, uh, you know, like the CND stuff that were outside all them American bases in the 80s that we used to see. Uh, yeah. And American, I think Americans were beaming them, weren't they? A lot of them died from uh, radiation poisoning because they were getting beamed on uh, when oh, really? they were protesting outside. Anyway, another story. But then people believed in that. Imagine if there's, imagine, right, like dinosaurs, is there any nuclear weapons? I, I, I'm coming yeah. to the more realization that there isn't any, right? Yeah. However, there might well be, but I'm coming to real from my research, I don't think there is. But um so they've got a lot of people protesting about something exist. that doesn't exist. Genius. Genius. And the same thing's That's applied now. Yeah. That's what they're doing now. They they're, they're inventing a supposed issue like climate change, global mm. climate warming change, that doesn't exist, or it does exist because yeah. they can prove that the climate changes. But they can't really prove that um, like, it's been changed. Yeah, like Black Lives Matter, they're getting people furious and angry with each other about it. Of course, they are. And not yeah. that means anything. No, and what they don't realise is they're all they're all being used both sides. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, anyway the, the CEF um, supports. This is the company that's funding these just stop oil nonsense. Supports only non-violent legal activities that reinforce the goal of constructively building public pressure and demanding urgent action from governments and corporations to address the global climate warming change emergency. It's a shame we didn't so, have, there's not, not all that money behind the uh, marches and the lockdowns and shit like that, right? Oh, no, nobody give anybody money for that. <laughs> I mean, you can have thousands, tens of thousands of people outside BBC and not even appear on a BBC news programme. <laughs> Um, so I mean, shout what, shame you, on you. when I saw that, right, Chris, that was sort of, I, I, I didn't have any belief in media anyway, but yeah, but um, that, is, that is in your face. That's not that suspicion. Is, it's not a suspicion, is it? It's not your no. suspicion. That is in front of your eyes. That, that drains the bucket. You know, that, <laughs> that drains the bath. That's everything's gone now. Your credibility is zero. Yeah. It's zero. Even if they came out and said these violent bastards were showering at us, you know, and smashing stuff, and even if even if they did put a bit of spin on it and said they were yeah. they were violent, and scaring us, so we didn't want to report conspiracy it. loonies and all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even if they did that, the silence it was silent. Yeah, they didn't Nothing. want to show a crowd outside the BBC. Yeah. They didn't want to show it. Um, yeah. So, so this Margaret Klein Sal Salomon, who's the CEO of this uh, climate emergency fund. Is Ameri an American climate activist. I'd say uh, Matt's more of a, a global climate warming change activist than she is. No mention of chemtrails, wrote like that with the spray. Yeah. She's also executive director of, of the Climate Emergency Fund, and she co-founded the... Sorry, not only is she direct executive director of the CEF, but in tw 2014, she co-founded the Climate Mobilization. And she's also the author of the book, Facing the Climate Emergency, how to transform yourself with climate truth. She's an advocate for an all hands on deck mobilization against global climate warming change. And that, that's who these people are. Now, there were a few people like that uh, who, who were directors, I didn't go into any de great detail, but um, the, the word dystopian is related is, in the dictionary means. Relating to or denoting an imaged state or society where there is a great suffering or injustice. 
So we're in it. We're in it. We're in it. We're right in the middle we're of in it. In it three years now, aren't we? Yeah, in the mid, right in the middle of it. Um, I, I, saw, I saw something in America also, the other day where there's that much crime now that where di- dystopia really is where the police won't protect you, but you can't protect yourself. Just like the medical system won't help you when you're ill, like we know, like what they told us. But you can't help yourself, or you're a conspiracy theorist and a, and a denier of uh, modern oh, medicine. The, 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 all media is lying to you, but you're yeah. not allowed to say anything. I mean, yes, that's communist. It's all these countries that we slag off: China, yes. North Korea, all that yeah. crap. Yeah. But but the yeah. thing is, you couldn't get into the middle of dystopia. And know it, could you? Because that would give the game away. You'd have to yes. be eased into it slowly, like we have. Yeah. With a little bit of a mm. shock, and then a little bit of ease off, and a bit of a shock. Yeah. But we are, that describes everything, like, everything dystopian there is. All, all the, they're trying to strip all the joy away from doing anything, even now. Anything. And that Jeremy Hunt, who uh, has just taken over as Chancellor, I saw him on a video today, uh, singing uh, Love to... All the countries that clamp down hard on the Divok, um, they're the ones he said that got out got out quicker, like China, where they were just. He said he knew someday she landed in China, tested positive, they put her in uh, a room, sealed it all, just fed her through an hole, right. and that's how they treated it, and that's how they got out. That's why they got out of it quicker. And he said, "I'm not saying that's where we want to go." Right. What are you saying then, you prick? Yeah. Why don't you say that that were out of order for a fucking cold? Why did you say that, you fucking prick? Now he's Chancellor excuse, at Exchequer. Excuse my French. Yeah. Now he's Chancellor at Exchequer. Fucking weasel. Yeah. Little rat boy weasel. Yeah. You should see video. I'll put it up on YouTube. It's, uh, um, yeah. It, 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 that, that's these, who these that, people that are. That crazy bastard. Like one of the, that, that is one of the crazy bastards running this country. Yes. And where, Following orders. Following the orders. Yeah. Um, and... Also, when you think about it, he's the he's he's the guy with the bloodline to the royal family. He's the guy we talked about at the beginning of this, yeah. And he's saying things like this. I mean, these are dangerous talk, isn't it? It's dangerous talk because we're as as uh, Ike says the 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 tiptoe, the totalitarian tiptoe, where it is like that nudge. Uh, well, like, well, like, well like you just said, fight. You just described dystopia. We are in. We've been in dystopia for three years. Yeah, we already probably were just a, a mild version yeah. of it. But we yeah. literally have been locked in our or told not to leave our houses. Yes. That's it. It doesn't matter how you get there. It doesn't matter if, no. if you say that you walk outside and you're going to get nuclear radiation or whatever. It doesn't matter how you get to that point. But as soon as someone's telling you you can't leave your house, you're in a fucking yeah. dystopia. <laughs> don't, yes. Don't, End of. Don't delude yourself. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, don't delude, delude yourself, yourself at all. Um, but yeah. Uh, so And you've got psychos you go. like that saying you should be taped into a room. Yeah. Not that we should do it. We, you, you actually do think we should, you should do it. It's T- t- sealed into a room, fed through an hole, right? Yeah. For, and and they were left there until the thought that it had gone, and then they were let out again. That's a where does that nightmare. stop? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a dystopian nightmare. That the the, yeah. the one thing they missed out there was they injected them and drug fuck out of them. Did they? No, I'm saying oh, right. that's the one bit they missed out. You know what I mean? They missed that bit off. Otherwise, that would have been Brave New World. All right, um, one more. Thing, just to add to this uh, dystopian nightmare scenario, the Just Stop Oil uh, PSYOP has sparked the Home Secretary um, it, to crack down on disruptive protesting. Whoa, whoa, hang on a minute. What do you mean PSYOP? It's a grassroots movement, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> the grassroots Started PSYOP. A lot of, team, yeah, yeah. Lot of 20 year olds. <laughs> yeah. Some it, teams it, of it rings bells of CND and the. Um, uh, 60s hippie movement that were all the counterculture controlled by uh, the good old CIA and yeah. Tavistock. Uh, yeah. So it just it reminds me of all that. But the government are on about coming out with a new bill to crack down on disruptive protests. Yeah, there we go. That's yeah. uh, Well, they're using the same thing for five different things as usual, aren't they? Mm. Protests. Yeah. So when people start protesting about um, arm spears and other things. Yeah, yeah. But, but, but the, the, the amazing thing is, right? They use guilt for them to raise money to fund them changing a law that means you can't argue against something that you don't agree with. Mm. How mad is that? It's, it's bonkers, isn't it? 
Yeah, for you to feel even more guilty. Yeah. Um, and traumatized, but yeah. evil comedy geniuses. Yeah, it is evil comedy geniuses. You're right. Um, anyway, we're coming up to well, we've done over an hour actually. It's about an hour and ten minutes of the first hour. If you want to join us for the next part of this show, you can join us at sheepfound.co.uk. If you go to podcasts uh, for the members hour. So we will see you next time. If you're not, if you're jumping ship now, but if you're coming over to the next hour, remember if you got if you want to contact us. Email us at info at sheepfarm.co.uk. And I'd like to thank everybody for listening. Uh, I'd like to thank all the members for supporting us. And we'll see you next time. Thanks see for you tuning next in. Time. Take it easy. Bye. Bye.